Johnny El Hashem, CEO of Edmund Rothschild Private Equity. Thank you very much for joining me here today. Thank you for hosting me. My pleasure. Um, okay, so I want to talk about what you're doing in terms of impact investing. Um, you've been in this market a lot longer than maybe even the term impact has been around. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Can you talk me through kind of the origins of the strategy and, and, and how your firm you know, identified this area? Yeah, absolutely. We're a conviction-driven investment house and we are extremely proud of being part of a Edmund Rothschild group which is built upon a legacy. The Rothschild family has been there for seven generations, daring and trying to go outside of the beaten tracks to deal with real life problems. And in the early years of 2000, the family um, I'm, was very humbled and honored. They gave me a mandate to build um, investment solutions that tackle real life problems. And we came to a conclusion that climate change it became a reality. There were some denials around it 20 years ago, but at least everyone was fine to say that resources are not infinite and they are limited and we need to deal with the problem of resources. At the same time, demographic changes with aging Europe, a positive demographic uh, dividend coming from uh, Africa, we need to deal with this and transform it into an opportunity. And as well, energy transition and all what goes around is essential for a more sustainable world. So based on these foundations and using human capital at the center and with the work of men and women, we decided to build investment solutions that deliver financial return, but as well solve problems, and that's the intentionality side of it. The additionality comes from the fact that when we've been doing it, no one was doing it, and as well the way we did it, we allowed things to become bankable, and this is the additional element that we brought to the table. And then, as we are very genuine on the way we've been doing it, we've been doing the right measurement and reporting. So we ended up doing impact investments without doing, without <laughs> knowing. <laughs> <laughs> and obviously impact, you know, in the past, say, eight or so years has become a, a common term and, and accepted in the industry. And with that, a lot of attention and excitement around the strategy. How has that increased focus on impact and you know, even just the labeling of impact affected what you do, your strategy, how you communicate to investors, the markets that you approach? Yeah, there's no doubt that this is a huge trend in the industry. Um, it started on good basis. It took the wrong route through greenwashing. Regulators came into play to say, watch out guys, you cannot greenwash as much as you want. However, uh, ESG integration, ticking the box to say that you're not harming, if I can summarize it this way, became a standard and everyone is doing it. Now, um, w if we look at the needs of the world we live in and what we, with the legacy and the responsibility that we have in terms of leaving a better world for our kids, we need to act with intentionality. And this is the right moment. Very simply because there is a lot of dry powder out there, record years of fundraising for three, four consecutive years. We have dry powder and there is a change in the fundamentals. And value creation today, luckily, is not anymore an issue of benefiting from low interest rate, but it's about really bringing skills to the play and that's how GPs can differentiate themselves. It is about the right time to benefit from the dry powder we have First, to make sure that our LPs see the angle behind the intentionality and the benefit of dealing with these problems for the global allocation of investment they have and the purpose they're serving, whether they're serving pensioners, whether they're serving uh, wealthy clients. There is a fantastic opportunity today because the inflation led us to a very high level of prices that it is going to be structural on the energy side, it's going to be structural on the disruption of value chain, it's going to be a very challenging thing to deal with the unwanted immigration that for a way or another we're going to get it here in, the, in Europe and we need it and we need it as we're an aging population. So it is the right moment to rethink and build on new foundations to reduce dependency on Asia, valorize the proximity with Africa, 
shorten the value chains by investing in Africa, benefiting from the emergence of this continent, bring to this continent what is needed, not to end up being 12 billion on this planet because there is no resources for everyone. Mm -hmm. Let's rethink the agriculture and the food model differently. Mm -hmm. Let's not go the route of marketing as well and packaging and stuff that it doesn't feed the world. We need volume, we need food, but we need to preserve the soils and we do new things differently. Technology exists, innovation exists, let's put capital at work to emerge these solutions and serve and help. And at the same time, energy efficiency, Europe is leading the way, Europe is lagging behind economically because of the current situation, but it is about time to make sure that we secure our energy dependency, we build our base load renewable energy because intermittent wind and solar are very good we need them however we need base load solutions through biomass through short um, circuits of valorizing of waste to produce energy and make our industrialists more resilient and less dependent on external sources mm -hmm. And you know, as you're as you're illustrating, uh, uh, Europe globally, we're in you know facing some some very tough and, and increasing headwinds, both from an energy perspective, macroeconomically, geopolitically. What's your outlook, you know, as a, as an impact investor? Um, do you see these things as opportunities? You know, how optimistic or worried about you? Uh, or worried are you? About Extremely it? optimistic. Okay. <laughs> Extremely optimistic. I'm not, I, do, I hate speaking about myself because in this business we need to remain very humble. Mm -hmm. I grew up in Beirut, and what I've seen in my childhood has nothing to do what we're seeing now. Yes, there is some issues or constraint, but we can turn them into opportunity. That's why I'm extremely optimistic. We have the technology breakthrough which will help us to achieve this transition at a lesser cost. Let's use technology to enable businesses to do things differently. Technology is, is the best asset we have to achieve this efficiently. There is a fantastic opportunity as well to give back the tools for the industrialists. Let's put finance at the service of the industry and to achieve this, there is a very simple route on which we have all to agree. We claim that we are long-term investors and this industry is illiquid. Let us act really as long-term investors, sustain the businesses, support them, give them the means to grow, not think about IR, our IRR and the short-term route, how to make money quickly. Let's assume the responsibility, educate our clients, educate the business owners in a way through governance to achieve this road toward a better world, transition and sustainability. Yes, it has a cost, but if we don't pay it today, the bill will be much more expensive tomorrow. The news is, the good news, we have dry powder. Let's rethink this foundation, benefit from these new trends, because there is great skills in this conference. Those men and women that made of this asset class, this star asset class, it wasn't by accident. It came to because of their know-how, skills, and they are very knowledgeable people. There is a lot of value behind these guys. Let's act collectively, LPs, GPs, and businesses in a way to invest in greenfield opportunities, in new ventures, in a way to build on solid foundation by leveraging the synergies that we can create between all the players. Let's do it. Thank you so much, Annie. It's my pleasure. <laughs>